We've had time to marinate on the samples. Now let's make some tweaks, starting first with the swatches window to make our starry borders just a touch lighter for better contrast from our details. The stars are already using this swatch, so changes to the swatch itself will automatically be applied to all of the stars. Shuffling the cards revealed that, yes, dramatically different corner indices are a problem for legibility. So let's delete the currently small lower right corner indices to make room for the large ones. Selecting all of our large indices, I'm using Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform to create a copy, and then rotate that copy, giving us new perfectly aligned lower left indices quickly and efficiently. Our top details can still use more contrast, so I'm using Recolor Artworks Advanced Options to switch the selected objects from their current swatch to a new, darker, more saturated swatch. I've been thinking these cards are missing one very important celestial body, the moon, so let's add it. Using ellipses of graduating sizes and then the Shape Builder tool, I'm creating six transition phases. We'll duplicate these to create a full moon cycle across 13 phases. I'm arranging these so that the full moon and the new moon phases land on the sevens, probably the most significant number in medieval understanding with the seven planets, which included the moon and the sun, seven days of the week, seven metals, seven seas, seven virtues and seven sins, and seven sacraments. I had originally thought the moons would sit with our new low right indices like the suns do with the upper left, but I found that this placement centered with the frames might be a little bit better. Let me know which moon placement you prefer in the comments. We'll be doing the card backs next, and in the meantime, you can pre-order the deck on my site.